Hey everyone, this is Rob and Michelle and welcome to Boon Bape, your weekly podcast and everything you need to know about old school RuneScape. Uh, all right, so this week up on the docket, as always, we'll be starting off with any updates that we have going on with us, what we've been doing this week and any progression on our accounts. Yeah. And then we'll be going right into the update this week, which is weird because, again, it's kind of a big update, but also not <laughs> It's last week's update, time. but yeah. official. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of like the same update again. So we'll be going over that. And then we also have a bit of a Q&A summary that the mods had, uh, I think, like last week, but they just posted the... Um, the notes for it this week so we'll mm -hmm. be talking about that including wilderness boss reworks rewards as well as the difficulty of chambers of zarek and theater of blood possibly being changed. but um yeah so we'll be going over all of that and then of course as always we'll be finishing off with a few questions from the community so make the sure the community that is yes exactly <laughs> so make sure if you do ever want to submit your questions there's going to be plenty of places to do it make sure to stick around at the end to know where yeah but before we get into any of that michelle How's it going? It's going pretty good, I'd say. Yeah. And we've officially put a save the date. No, just save. We have we have a date for the subathon. Is what I'm trying to say right now. Yeah, that was a really good way of saying it. <laughs> uh, so this is coming out on Thursday. It's tomorrow if you're listening the day this comes out. It's going to be Friday for us. Uh, I mean, I have it scheduled on Twitch. So the schedule or like the countdown panel will say what time it is in your time zone or it should. Oh, that's cool. So you go and check that out. I'm going to be starting the stream. I It's weird. This is my first subathon. And, you know, now that I've officially announced it, I'm definitely realizing like, ah, I could have done this way better. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's always improvements. Always. Uh, So the thing is, I usually start 8 p.m. I'm going to start at 2 p.m. And I'm going to stream eight hours no matter what. So I'm going to be streaming 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then... Every sub thereafter, I will Every sub add... you get during the stream will add a minute to the stream time. Yeah, which I know is like not a lot of time, but I'm capping it at uh, seven hours after, which just so happens to be 420 minutes. So yeah, it's so kind of perfect. Yeah, 420 plays it. Yeah, so if we get 420 subs, that would be insane, and I'd be streaming until five in the morning. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So... I mean, a 15-hour stream is definitely a decent amount the most I've ever stream is 11 hours and i was like deceased by the end yeah but well, also i started at a late time that's why i'm starting early yeah how, i mean how I you, people, you get no subs and i just don't stay up late i mean that's that's just how it hey, is then i have the night off yeah that's the nature <laughs> of the game dude yeah i'm nervous especially because i'm gonna be streaming during the day so if you haven't seen our stream because i streamed too late for you this might be your chance to come say hi this is your one shot your one shot one spaghetti yeah ttv slash boon vape uh, if you want to come See if I'm actually, uh, I was going to say alive, live at the same time that you're available to hang out. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so the max is going to be 15 hours, 2 p.m. to 5 a.m. I doubt that I'll have to go till 5 a.m. That would just be the most subs we've ever had times like three. Yeah, which would be cool. It would obviously be cool. But I set like a bunch of like subathon goals and stuff. So just a couple are like random bond giveaways throughout time, mass chambers, trying an FPS, first person shooter game. I've never played one. Yeah. I, I mean, at least not that I remember. And then uh, like creating a hardcore for the rest of the stream. That's at 400 subs. Yeah. I feel like that'll not be hardcore for very long. Oh yeah, that's why I just said for the rest of the stream because I know I'm not. I'm probably gonna die during the stream. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Especially if that happens, that would mean that it's like 4 a.m. and I've been streaming for like over 12 hours. Yeah. But uh, then there's just a couple things I incorporated from the regular one. So 4:20 is that you guys choose an OSRS tattoo for me, which was already like one of my big goals. Yeah. But uh, God, if we make it that far, you guys better choose something cool. Don't choose something lame. Yeah, I was like they're probably gonna <laughs> choose one of the like. The, like the worst thing that you'd ever want yeah but at least make it like look cool uh, i mean i'm sure i could find it even if you guys give me like the dumbest idea i'm sure if i go to a good artist they can make yeah it look maybe dumb. they can yeah exactly i just don't i hope you guys are like i don't mind getting funny tattoos i just don't want you guys to choose something dumb <laughs> just like a shovel like a spade i mean a shovel would actually be kind of cute yeah, I was like, I don't know. And I could put like a little banner over it and say something about like the wilder, or I could say like sit as a little banner. Yeah, I was like, I don't know <laughs> what someone would choose that is just like so lame that it wouldn't be I able to either. be made cool. I can't think of anything that wouldn't be able to make cool because I don't mind having funny tattoos. I yeah. literally don't care. I just hope it's not something like, I don't know what would be dumb. Yeah. But don't think of anything dumb. Think, think of cool stuff. 
I think something that would be kind of dumb but also cool and funny would be like the like the death animation, like the death. Um, oh, my like, character down on his knees, like, oh. yeah, like, like when your character folds when they die. Wait, I would actually like that. Yeah, that'd be, like, that'd be, yeah, that'd be super funny. I can't think of anything that wouldn't like. Somebody else was saying before I got the uh, Skotos or Skatizo claw, the dark claw for the helm. Yeah. Uh, and also, I was talking about like, oh, maybe I'd get like a chompy chick. They're like, I think someone said get chompy chick wearing the purple helm. <laughs> I was like, that would actually be kind of funny. <laughs> and, dark, and dark flippers. <laughs> and dark flippers on his little chompy body. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be cute. But uh, yeah, some other things. We're gonna have a bond wheel. So every three thousand bits, we're going to spin a wheel, and it just is like between zero and five bonds, and we like choose winners in the chat. Yeah. And uh. Yeah, there's going to be individual goals, too. Like, you get to use skilling, a mini game for me. I name a tile after you anywhere you want in the game. And then for 10 subs or 1,500 bits, which 1,500 bits is a way better deal for them. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you get to tweet for me, which is within reason. <laughs> within okay. reason. Okay. Nothing inappropriate. Like, keep it PG-13, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, nothing that would get you. Like, I, I feel like it's impossible to get banned off Twitter, but yeah. Don't try. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, I won't say like the F word. We'll keep it PG-13. Like if you could say in a Marvel movie, I'll say it. Okay. Well, they I say mean, something Marvel risque, movies, but not too crazy. PG-13 movies get two F words. Well, not this tweet. Okay. There you go. <laughs> uh, which is funny because if you watch the stream, you know, every other word that I say <laughs> is a swear word. Yeah. But our Twitter is like pretty safe for work. Yeah. It's, it's fairly tamed. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, there's already like something I think I'm going to say during the stream is um, we're going to have it be 420 subs or the equivalent in bits because somebody pointed out that I should do that. Oh, yeah. Of course. So it's going to be a lot of math. So every 5,000 bits will count as one sub. Five? No, 500 bits. Yeah, I was like 5,000 <laughs> Every bits. $50 is one sub. <laughs> yeah, I was like definitely not. So there's also this thing where I'm really bad at remembering how much bits are worth. <laughs> Yeah. Every 500 bits will count as one sub. It's going to be really a, a pain to keep track of. I'm going to look up stuff tomorrow and be like, is there like tools that people have created to help me with this? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I hope so. But yeah, other than that, just been gaming, bro. Just gaming? Just gaming. I don't know. This was a new thing. My defense is 97. It might have been last week. Uh, I don't know. That might be new. Yeah, it might be new. I feel like that's the only skill I've gotten up. I've been like AFKing woodcutting during the day too because Alfresco was like just got to Redwoods. Yeah. And it was already to 91. And I'm like, oh my God, I need just AFK woodcutting. That's pretty cool. Because it's easy. And you get like a lot of bird's nests and stuff with clues. And I love clues. Uh, I haven't been doing chambers as much this week. I've done a couple chambers runs. Oh, really? I thought you were doing it like all week. I was doing it all at the beginning of the week. Like right after um, recording, I'd say I did it a lot. But now like this new week, I've been doing a lot of Barbarian Assault. Oh, randomly. Really? Yeah, because oh, okay. a lot of people um, in the chat like want their fighters torso or level five. And I I said this last week, too, because I think I played like one day with everyone. Yeah, I've been doing it a lot more. <laughs> oh, well, I've been cool. playing like at least one game every stream. And it's pretty cool because we're helping a lot of people like get to level five and stuff. Yeah. So you're it's just like chill. doing BA carries. Yeah, kind of. Not much of a carry because um, I still am talking in the chat. So <laughs> I'm not the best teammate even still. But... I mean, it's still easier with someone, anyone that's level five. Yeah, definitely. It's nice being healer too. I feel like I'm healer most of the time because I could just heal people for like 30 at, or over 30, I think, at a time. Yeah, it's a Great. lot better than the five you get at level one. Oh my God, it sucks. <laughs> but yeah, that's been really cool. I also, <laughs> this is the most me thing to ever happen. So last week I was looking at the collection log and I noticed a dragon full helm for the first time. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that they look so cool. Yeah. And they're worth like 65 mil. So I was like, all right, like I want this, obviously. Yeah. She, I'm not good at consistent she money. She didn't know that it was like <laughs> one of the rarest items in the game, yeah. which is why it's so expensive. I didn't, I'm not good at making consistent money. I'm very much like chase after things that are big drops. Yeah. Which is not a smart way to get money. Well, in I mean, this, game. this is the method of getting it is consistent money, or at least. Yeah, no, you make my gang. I'll explain it. So how you get it is. You go to Mithril Dragons in the Ancient Caverns, which is like that whirlpool by the Barbarian Assault yeah, area. Yeah, it's, it's under, oh, I was going to say under Backstory and Falls, but it's oh, under yeah. Backstory and Lake. It is. Also, by the way, our dishwasher's on, so sorry if you could hear it. I should have put off starting it. No, it's fine. Uh, But anyway, yeah, you go down there, kill Mithril Dragons, which hit you with like three different attack styles, so you have to, you can't prey completely. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they're a metal dragon, so they have everything. They're mean. 
And uh, after you kill those, there's a 1 out of 42, I believe, chance that they drop chewed bones. And once you get the chewed bones, you go and make a pie, a pier, pyre, pyre, a pyre with those, and you prey them on the pyre or whatever, and you have a 1 out of 256 chance of getting the dragon full helm. Which doesn't sound that bad. And then you do the well, math it's and it's... 256 times Yeah, times 40. 40. It's over 10,000 dragons. Yeah. <laughs> and then you also have a chance of getting the helm naturally from the dragons. But you, you said it's it like was... like one out of... You said it was 32,000, right? Yeah, something like that. It's something crazy. Yeah, so... That'd be wild it's if I got it from either one out of 10,000 or one out of 32,000, which either way is... If you think about one out of 10,000 isn't too, too bad. You say that, but out of all the hours I've spent at... Um, I've only killed like 200 and I spent hours there. But yeah, I mean like all out of all the hours I spent at Vorkath, I've never got the one out of 10k drop. Yeah, exactly. It's not the um, not the craziest grind, but it's not the best grind. That's no, for yeah. sure. No, it's definitely not the craziest, but, <laughs> but it's definitely it's, a grind. It's nice because you do make money as you stay. Yeah, because you get all the... Do you pick up the bones and stuff? Or I prayed them. Oh, you pray the bones? Yeah, yeah, I'm really close to getting my prayer up to 90. So what do you what do you keep? Do you not keep anything? Um, I keep any other drops that they drop. They drop like a uh, rune like stuff, rune items. Okay. dragon um what's it called? arrowheads, things like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, they drop a bunch of like random stuff. But yeah, I was doing a bit of those. I'm probably like a little over 200 kills so far. I also randomly did giant mole the other day. Nice. Which was fun. You got the pet? No, I wish. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was there for like 40 kills and I left. I think I ended the stream around then because like no one was talking. And I was like, all right, Giant Mole is not the content apparently. Yeah, it is not the best. <laughs> Especially not the end of the stream. Like when I'm a little tired, you know. When I'm tired, I feel like I do high energy things to make up for me. Yeah. <laughs> mole was not it. Mole was making me a little sleepy. Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever like excited I, to go do Mole. I died twice. because How do you die to the Mole? I was doing the Darox method where you get your health down to one so you hit harder. Yeah. And then uh, twice I went to turn my prayer and automatically clicked to pray mage because I was so used to going to chambers and it just smacks me and I die and I'm like, bro. You didn't have auto like, or you didn't have like set up prayers or anything? I don't really use that that often anymore. I but usually I mean, just don't click it. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I guess I like, should. I guess the mole, you're not ever changing your prayers. So. Well, the rest of the time I was just keeping my prayer on the entire time. Yeah. That's... <laughs> because whenever I turn it off and went to turn it back on, I think I was just automatically thinking of being at home and I'm like, mage. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, that was kind of funny. I made like a mill there in like 40 minutes or so, which was nice because I'm not a good money maker. But not any more purples this week because I haven't done as much raids. Yeah. But it's still been a pretty chill week. I'll probably hopefully do some chambers tonight because I really want to go back. We went yesterday and it was a lot of fun. Uh, Polly went with me. We were in Vespula's room for an hour because we ran out of supplies. And we made more supplies, but we were out of stamina. And the it was Vestibule's room was like three rooms away from a bank. So like it Sounds sucked. Awful. It sucked. We were there for literally an hour and we left. I don't I think I thought Polly wanted to stay, so I was staying. And I think Polly thought I wanted to stay. I should have just asked, like, I wanna leave. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. But I didn't want to be like rude if they wanted to stay. I don't think either of us enjoyed that hour. No. So no, I, no one enjoyed that hour. I understand the gist of Vespula. I feel like I could do it. It's just like I played myself because I was doing it well and then I'd run out of stamina. And yeah. the whole thing is you run back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't work if you don't have stamina. Yeah. You have to like, that's the, you're flinching, right? Yeah. You're flinching. Yeah. Yeah. Not having run there is seriously detrimental <laughs> to the game. Yeah. It's pretty tough <laughs> doing run content without running. Yeah. No, it sucked. But uh, I mean, it was good practice. I am now more comfortable in Vesuvio's room than I was before because I was spent my entire life in there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel more confident that next time I go, it'll be okay. What do you use at Vespula? What, like, do you mage it? Uh, I was using mage last night. Okay. But then I switched to range because we were there so long. I only like 600 charges left to my Sanguine SD and I was like, I need oh. to save these. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, you need more yeah. bloods. Yeah, I do. Oh, I did a little bit of Guardians of the Rift too. Oh my gosh. My, you know, the huge colossal pouch. Yeah. It completely degraded. I have to go get all the pouches again. Oh, yeah. yeah which yeah. no one knew was possible. Everyone was like, no, it's just in your bank. It was not in my bank. I watched back the stream and I clicked to fill it and it just disappeared. Oh, dang. I guess I didn't fix it for so long that it disappeared. And I'm like, you couldn't just make me not able to use it? Like, why would you vanish it? It doesn't say in the wiki. It if you're going to look it up. It doesn't say in the wiki, really. I mean, at least that I saw, it was really annoying because I was like so confused. I thought I dropped it on the ground or something until I watched back. I spent like... 10 minutes after the stream, like going through it and being like, when when did it disappear <laughs> to see what happened? Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, it says that you can like 
not use it anymore. But it doesn't say, like, it disappears. I don't know. Maybe I'm just dumb. And it does say somewhere. But it sucked. So you're able to get a new needle at least. You don't have to go and, like, earn a new one. But I do have to go earn back all the pouches. Wait, that's crazy, though. That means that you were getting, like, so few essences. Like, how long did you wait before you repaired it? It was only putting, like, half my inventory in it. <laughs> that's, like, nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, but I was going to repair after the game. I never repair in the middle. Okay. So I was just using what I could, and I was going to repair after it <laughs> just vanished. Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. Uh, so I extra want the lantern now. <laughs> so <laughs> it never degrades. Yeah. Because now I'm scared I'm going to earn back all the pouches and lose them again. But it was fun. I do like... uh. I do like Guardians of the Rift, so I played like 10 rounds, maybe, maybe less even. It was a good time other than that. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, that I think that's it. I did a lot of random things this week. Yeah, it definitely seems like that. You did like a bunch of weird stuff. I did. I really, really did. How about you? How have you been? Uh, pretty good. I haven't been playing a ton, although I did play uh, quite a bit last week. I haven't been playing a ton this week. Um, You've been busy with real life stuff, I think. Uh, real life and also like my friend started playing Valheim again, which is always a really fun game it's kind of like minecraft where mm -hmm. you just like build kill stuff but it's like viking themed so if you're into like viking or north norse mythology then you probably like it as well if any of you guys are interested in building by the way robert has some videos from last year whenever like valheim first came out definitely i think it's like two years ago at this point but um and it was last year we haven't even we've only been affiliated for a year and it was around then uh well we've only been affiliated for that year but we've i, I was making youtube videos way before you were? Oh, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, so I think it was probably like a year and a half ago. Either. Oh, okay. But um, yeah. Regardless, so, there's videos. <laughs> yeah, there, there's videos, but I mean, they're kind of like older. The game's been updated a few times, so that's why I mean, my friends wanted to play it, and yeah. we're playing it modded, so it's cool because all the enemies are more difficult, and there's like unique weapons and stuff like that. But um, so I've been playing that a lot. But in, in RuneScape, I actually did like kind of a lot of stuff, but like also kind of not really at the same time, because I ended up, uh, I actually got the 90 fire making that i needed i went to winter tot and got Aye. a 90 fire making so it was pretty cool because when i got the abyssal lantern i was 87 so it wasn't too long and just I, three I just, levels yeah i just grinded out the all the xp at winter tot which was pretty easy mm -hmm. and um yeah dude once i got 90 i was so happy because I, I i'm not a big fan of winter tot but it goes by really fast it goes so. by very quickly yeah, so that's really And cool. you already have the pet, too, so that probably makes it less fun as well. You don't yeah, there's you nothing, have a pet to look forward to. There's nothing I could get there. I mean, I... The I dragon axe. I haven't got <laughs> any of the other uniques, to be fair. You have the outfit, right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I don't even know. If, I guess those are technically uniques, but I mean, yeah, I more mean like the... Fire tome. The, the tome of fire and the axe. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I don't have those. But either way, I finished that and then... Dude, the Abyssal Lantern is so crazy good if you I have 90. I want it so bad because it, it doesn't degrade your pouch. Yeah, if you have 90, it is it is crazy good. I mean, before that, it's cool because it gets you a chance at having extra runes and stuff like that or more points for the game. Mm -hmm. But 90, it's just the but, best. Yeah, 90, it gives you all that and your pouches don't degrade. So it's cool it's because... So cool. Which, which is, it's cool because it, normally it's lame having the giant pouch because it degrades in the middle of the round. Yeah. So you have to repair it every single round. Which is what happens to me and I don't repair it. And apparently they just disappear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to repair it at least, at least every other round. Yeah, but, I think um, mine was every other. Yeah. So wh what's it called? Um. Yeah. So that that's really cool. Honestly, the Abyssal Lantern makes that minigame so much more enjoyable. It's, yeah, it's kind of crazy. But um, I did that for a little while. I didn't get 77. I did level up, so I'm 76. Now I'm Real close. like half a level away from being 77, which has been <laughs> such a long work of progress. From that you keep thinking forever. you're getting. And I, then you have to find out, oh, wait, no. <laughs> yeah, instead of looking at my skill, I just constantly am thinking I'm 77. <laughs> so I've thought that I've legitimately gotten the like my 77th level. like Three times? Yeah, at least three times. <laughs> Every level, he's like, well, I'm at 76 now without uh, actually checking a level. Like, even this last level, I thought I was going to be 77, and then You're I was 76. so funny, dude. Yeah, I don't You're know. You're close now. You're one way. Yeah, now without a doubt. But, um, yeah, it was They just... roll back your 75 again. <laughs> I, I know, right? Uh, yeah, it's still pretty cool, but it's just still so slow. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's fine. The minigame is fine. I've gotten much more used to it, and now 
it's funny because whenever I first made the video about the mini game, I was getting like around, you know, four to 600 points. Like 400 was like probably the average four to 500. And then like 600 was like a really good game. Yeah. Which is crazy because now they made it easier. And also I have the pouches. I have the larger pouch and I have the, you know, the lantern. So I get on average, like, um, I think it's like eight or 900. I think it's 900. I think it's between 900 and 1,000, and I've gotten Dude. as much as 1,200. Since my pouch ran out, I'm getting, like, no points. I get, like, 300 and 200. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gotten it where it, it's, like, five. Like, it'll give me five and six reward points. <gasps> I'm so jealous. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of crazy. Oh, my gosh. I didn't tell you my last round whenever I was there. The game ended, so I left the room, and I left before it had officially ended, so I didn't get any points. Oh, they no, need to you, warn you. You have to wait for the XP drop. Yeah, they need to... They need to warn you. That sucked. Yeah. It was my last one of the night, too. And it was like 4, 3 in the morning. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to wait for the XP drop. They like delayed it now so you can get more XP. But um. But yeah. they need to warn you because you wouldn't know that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Well, after your first mess up, you would know that. Well, now I'm, I'm never going to leave the room. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that's about it. I really didn't do too much else. Just, yeah, did real life stuff. And then. Valheim. Yeah, Valheim. Really. Nice. But um, I don't know. I, I need to do some more stuff. I've been like thinking about more stuff that I that I've been wanting to do. So on your account. Yeah. So I think I've been wanting to do that. But also, I guess besides that, while I was doing, um, guardians, I was also doing again wood cutting on two different GIMs and then killing stuff on my Virewatch Sentinel. Yep. Oh, I got a blood shard. Oh, you did get a blood shard. That's nice. Yeah, I got a blood shard on my, on my Virewatch Sentinel, which I think in total I've made like forty. I think forty mil on him now. 40 blood shards? 40 blood, yeah, 40 Wait, blood shards. <laughs> four blood shards. Yeah, four blood shards. Yeah, so. 40 blood shards, imagine. I made oh at, at least 40 mil on him. I think probably closer to 45. Yeah. Or 50. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's getting up there in combat level as well, which is pretty nice. That's good. It's not like crazy. I think he's only like 75 or 76 attack, but his strength is like 82. So he's that's catching dope. up. Yeah. Uh, besides that, that's pretty much it. Um, probably going to work on more bossing next week, but we'll see. Cool. Um, as far as the update goes, though, we can move right into that. So this time around, we have, like we said, pretty much the same update as last week, but the actual version of it. So this is the, <laughs> I know, it's kind of lame, but uh, the Emir's Arena. So this is the full launch version. Uh, a couple of hot fixes and changes that they've done since the release of it is uh, a lot of players were saying that the number of rewards, reward points were too low per game. So they actually had a hot fix, and now um, instead of having their initial plan, which you would receive half of the report, half of the points now, and half as a bonus at the end of the week. What? Which was kind of like a weird banking Who wants system. To wait a week. Yeah. Now you're just going to receive all of them at once. Good. So you should be getting literally twice as many points um, immediately. Nice. Um, besides that, players thought that the arena's full launch would start with the max med bracket. Because that was, I think, listed first in the rotations, mm -hmm. and also it's the most common or most common build. Um, but they started with uh, the Zerker build, and they also started the, with the Zerker build on the um, the test week. So they were just going to do that again. But apparently, everyone kind of hated that, so <laughs> uh, they went back and changed it to the Max Med account. Maybe they should just because this is the one where they're like, we specifically want to see this attack style. Um. Well, it's just the build that is like the most common where everything is like fairly even. Uh huh. Or whereas Zerker is um I think Zerker is like low attack. Did I tell you I tried it? Uh no, I don't think oh, I think you said you did like one or something like uh, that. I did a few actually yeah. because I ended up getting dared by Panda too. But I went to PvP Arena and uh I fought with Panda a couple times. Oh, okay. And won nice. a couple times. He dared me to do a two out of three. And I won two of those. And he said it's because he had to go. And he was distracted on Discord the second one. Uh -huh. and I'm like, all right, it sounds like a likely excuse after I PK'd you. But yeah. okay. But uh, so sit. it was pretty cool. All right. It's like we did the max med. And you can, they have like an entire list of everything you could use, including graceful. They don't have primordial boots, which I thought was random. Yeah. I was like searching for them. It's a huge list. It's kind of overwhelming. I yeah, didn't they really don't know have prims. Use. I think they like also didn't have Eternals. I don't think they have the max boots of any kind. Yeah. It's Strange. weird. But it was pretty fun, actually. 
I don't, I haven't tried since the full release. I don't know like how the points and stuff are going to work, but the practice was kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, also the points kind of don't matter because the rewards are not very important. Yeah. They're not useful to me. They're not even fashion scape. Yeah. But um, either way, so this week, uh, this week's update brings the full launch of the Amir's Arena. Read on to see what we've changed and for our thoughts on some of your feedback. Uh, last week, the Amir's Arena, aka the PvP Arena, opens its gates to adventures for the first time. It's been great watching you all get stuck into duels and tournaments of all kinds, and, and even running a few of your own. One of the major selling points of the Amir's Arena is the ability for players to fight from anywhere, at any time, and in any world. Of course, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, you can join the arena just by going to the grouping tab, and there's a PvP tab there. You can join from anywhere, and uh, there's also like a little wait time, so you can like continue farming or whatever, and they'll give you a, a signal, so you can like take a break from your bossing to get to a safe place and then join. We didn't do it like that, because that seemed like actually kind of confusing in practice. Oh, okay. But I mean, that was also last week. Yeah. Uh, the technology put in place to make this feature work is constructed from the new clan system we introduced last year. Its cross-world functionality may be very limited, but it still brought us this new method of recruiting players for activities. We hope to be able to extend it to more multiplayer content in the future. Uh, it's kind of funny. I feel like the clan system was only invented for things like this. They were planning this secretly? Because the clan system, if you think about like, what did the clan system do? It was just a... A, a new form of chat. <laughs> it was just clan chat 2.0. Oh, also, people have been saying that we should actually like start doing stuff with our clan. Because I was like, yeah, our clan's kind of dead. And they are like, you should just start inviting people again. I was like, that's very true. We could actually just make it a thing again. I mean, you could, but then, yeah. I mean, it's not like you can't. It's just a lot of, it's a lot more tedious work to add people. and work <laughs> than people think. Like, you have to always be looking if someone applies. Mm -hmm. And if someone doesn't apply and they're like, oh, come invite me, then you got to stop what you're doing and go, like, invite them. It's yeah. not like we don't want to do these things. It's just it takes a lot of time. Yeah. But um, I might start to, doing that. Yeah, not to say that we're not going to do events or anything like that. It's just that's yeah. why. People were saying we should do, like, a bingo and stuff. And I was like, if you guys are okay with, like, really small amounts of rewards, we're not going to be, like, all those other bingos where they're, like, one bill. Yeah, they're, like, <laughs> 20 mil entry fee. Yeah, we'll be, like, uh, maybe a mil entry fee we yeah. pull together for the reward. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's All only, five of us. Something easy. <laughs> yeah, I think we usually only have, like, five people on out of the 130 in our class. Yeah, that's why I was saying we need to start just inviting people who actually speak to us. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. if anyone wants to join, for sure. Um, they go on to say that the primary function of the soft launch was to make sure that these new and complicated systems were working as intended while under the strain of thousands of players. While there are some tweaks we need to make following your feedback, more on that in a moment, it's safe to say that the matchmaking and core systems are working fantastically. So without further ado, we declare that Amir's Arena open. Someone pop a bottle of Squirk Juice. Such a gross name. <laughs> So for now, we can take a look at the early changes that they've made based on our feedback. So, um, yeah, this is just a lot of the stuff that we saw going into this. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that they do mention down at the bottom is stuff that they can't change, which a lot of it is stuff that people wanted to change. That's funny. But uh, either way, we'll get into it. Uh, players will no longer be able to see items that they are unable to equip within the loadout interface. That's For good. example, players configuring their pure loadout won't be able to see choices with defense requirements because why would you need there that? There was a couple things that I uh, got and I was like, I'm going to use this. And it's like, you do not have the ability to use this. I'm like, well, why are you showing yeah. me then? <laughs> yeah. What, so that also goes into the next one. For instance, like I was saying last time, a lot of people were upset that even with the max med account, you couldn't use the Garazi Rapier, even though you could get it. Same with the Inquisitor's Mace, because since they have done their rebalancing pass over them, they now have an 80 attack requirement instead of 75. No one could use them? That's so really funny. So literally no one could use wow. them. Wow. Um, so yeah, they've since removed the Garazi and the Inquisitor's Mace from the loadout interface for the time being, because, of course, it has an 80 attack requirement. Um, a number of items missing from the soft launch has been added, so they added all of the salad hat, robe, and top, which is the Zerikin <laughs> hat, robe, and top, as well as rune gloves, Zerite, crossbow, and the amulet of blood fury. That seems like it might be nice. Uh, yeah, definitely could be. Uh, the following items have been removed because they are too overpowered, and uh, not necessarily too overpowered, but they are must-haves and everyone was using them, which include the ancient god sword, the new one, uh, the ring of suffering imbued, as well as the purple sweets. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of people were just like tick-eating and 
like of using the god sword That's and of fine. course the high defense on the ring of suffering is really really good so a lot of people were using that so they said it was too good which is kind of funny i wish i would have tried them <laughs> yeah. It, yeah it's kind of hilarious that like they like give you a game mode that is like cookie cutter and they're all like yeah these are two these are two cookie cutter we're gonna these. <laughs> literally <laughs> um the timer before a tournament starts has been reduced by three minutes and 30 seconds down to five minutes so that hopefully the game times are a bit faster in the staging mm -hmm. area and stuff like that uh, players will also receive reminders in the chat box whenever the tournament is about to begin so hopefully uh you'll spend more time in the tournament and less time you know just out and about in the staging area <laughs> Uh, the info button that players can use to check brackets during a tournament is now hidden during combat because I think it was just like popping up on your screen. Oh, okay. Uh, while it's great to see combats taking an interest in how tournaments are going, this change uh, should ensure that you're only checking the brackets between fights and not while your opponent is launching special attacks. At your face. At your face. <laughs> uh, reduce the size of the timer during fights because, again, it was pretty obstructive. Uh, they also added a chat box, chat box message to remind players that they won't gain rank rewards during unranked fights. I don't know how that can be confused. Uh, the health bars visible to spectators via the telescopes around the arena have been adjusted slightly to improve the viewing experience. I think that's kind of cool that they have the spectator thing. I like that. And the last few things is peers can no longer use the Heavy Ballista or Ava's Assembler inside the PvP arena, which makes sense. And Zerkers are no longer able to use Elite Void inside of the PvP arena, which okay. also makes sense. So they go on to say, this week's update also sees the inclusion of players' PvP arena rank on the high scores. So you'll be able to see exactly how you stack up against your fellow combatants. I think that is like the only thing carrying this entire update. People love being high rank. Yeah, stuff. people love <laughs> rank chasing in this game. Not me. Players will have to log in and out of standard game worlds in order to upgrade their rank on the high scores since the PvP arena worlds aren't able to directly communicate their high scores. It's worth knowing that any developers making use of the high scores API will need to update their scripts following today. Apologies for any inconveniences. Remember, now the PvP arena is officially open for business, players' rank and reward points from the soft launch will be reset. On the flip side, the Amir's finest merchants are done counting their stock, and as of today's update, you'll be able to spend your hard-earned reward points on abuse scrolls and blighted sacks in the ward shop at the arena entrance. Two rewards. Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually wow. just so disappointing. It's literally just blighted wave sack times 75, blighted surge sack times 50, and scroll of imbuing. I mean, some of that's the community's fault for putting no on everything. I mean, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, lastly, we want to reiterate some of the points we spoke about in this week's Q&A for anyone who missed it, which we haven't read yet. Yeah, which we'll, we, we will be talking about in just a minute. Yeah, so the next live stream is going to be moved to Monday the 18th of July at 17 BST. We'll be joined by PvP creators for another roundtable stream to discuss various topics in the PvP community. Next week's Thursday slot should go ahead as normal. I'm sure that will be a lively stream. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be watching that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then rolling right into the feedback points and future changes. This is a lot of stuff that a lot of people wanted, and they said they could do some of it, but a lot of it they can't, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so these are some suggestions that they've seen over the last week. And while some of them are quick fixes they've already implemented, uh, some of them will take quite a bit longer or just are completely out of the question. Here's what they think they'll be able to offer in the near future. All right, so a lot of people were having frustrations with the arena spell book because I guess I didn't know, but apparently you get all of the runes and you're able to use all of the spells at all the time, which is obviously not how it normally is. Yeah. And so it is opposed Something to... Something like that. I just know that you can't grab runes and everyone was like, you already have them. And I was yeah. like, what? Yeah, so obviously a lot of people are very particular with how they've learned to PvP as should as should be the case because they don't usually play with every single rune so what they're doing is they're trying to make it so that they'll allow you to control exactly which runes are in your rune pouch and display which spells are enabled so that players can actually focus on the game and instead of unlearning years of practice and that's literally what it says here yeah so yeah obviously if you filter your um, spells by only the ones that you have runes for and everything's still there <laughs> yeah you have to instead of like doing a five-way switch and just immediately clicking on surge or something like that. You'd have to do a five-way switch and then move your mouse down five inches to click surge, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem like a big deal, but when the game works in 0.6 second ticks, it kind of is. Yeah. So, um, That'd be frustrating. Yeah, so hopefully they'll change that soon. 
Uh, feedback also indicated that a lot of you want a way to copy your opponent's loadout. This is something I mentioned last time. Yeah, that should be a thing. And uh, so they are hoping to have that. Definitely not. They said they're not going to have presets for multiple loadouts. That seems like it's just not going to be feasible. But to be able to copy someone else, they think they are going to be able to get that in their hands in the next couple of weeks. Because it's kind of hard to go switch back and tweet the te- back. And forth between the tabs and be like, all right, what do they have that I don't have? Just yeah, over and over. It's just a super <laughs> tedious process, yes. which it shouldn't be. Uh, they also had a number of requests for certain items or to cap the permanent or permitted quantity of supplies, namely food, from the <laughs> equipment chest for being too powerful. So that's also one of the reasons why they removed the ancient god sword, ring of suffering, and they're open to further suggestions. Okay. They're also thinking about the bow of Ferdinand is another item that they're keeping an eye on. Although we hope that the inclusion of the Xerite crossbow this week will help balance things out a little. They are still keeping an eye on that. Also, I think one of the biggest problems that the entire system had is going to be the next point, which a lot of people have expressed concern that NH or no honor style PKing is the by far the most prevalent style and is pretty much exactly what this was built for which is Mm -hmm. kind of crazy because that's what a lot of people have problems with because lms is the same exact thing no honor is just like you could get no honor is just using any style of attacks with any kind of prey okay just any means possible so um yeah that's i don't know why they call it no honor but that's what they call it um it's one of the toughest pvp styles to get grips with and many of you have asked for greater support for beginner beginner friendly options or just yeah (laughs) i would also include just not meta options Uh, lots of you have been organizing unranked duels and tournaments for simpler setups like edge style pvp it's rare to see these ranked play and they are therefore harder to or harder for players to queue up for right now they have no promises on a permanent ladder where alternate styles can flourish and if they introduce these alternate styles in a separate queue they fear that they are going to have um essentially cannibalized from their main player base and so the queues would be very long the matchmaking queues so that's their main concern and why they are not going to be adding an alternate style queue okay um they may be able to offer it in a different way or in a seasonal style ranking ladder or something like that but that'd be cool they don't have any plans or don't foresee any like permanent solution for any edge style pvp yeah so if you don't like um, you know, no honor style PvPing, tribrid setups, um, then I guess you're out of luck for the most part, unless you can like find other people to agree to do that with. Okay. Yeah, kind of unfortunate, but either way, I guess it's good that they <laughs> I guess put put it out there immediately that they're not gonna be adding that. Um, as far as they're also aware that these steel ranked players are able to find fights really quickly. Players in Mithril or Iron rank are having really long wait times. Um, So they'll be keeping an eye on the rank distribution changes over time so that they can fine tune it in again so that people aren't waiting as long. Perfect. Um, So, Yeah, ish. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, Speaking of updates, rest assured that we'll be informing you of any further changes we make. We're planning to make to the PvP arena. We're consistently or constantly on the lookout for feedback, so be sure to share it with them. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you had fun in the arena. It's actually out now. Yeah, Yeah, we'll have to do it sometime together. Yeah, maybe. We'll I mean, see. He won't. <laughs> yeah, definitely probably won't. But um, yeah, either way. Uh, Something cool that I noticed in the other small changes around Gilnor this week. It says the flower traders have left Mistelin to search for new flowers elsewhere. Gilbert remains at the flower meadow and has managed to acquire some more rare colorful seeds. So you can right click your flower crown and like change to see what color he found. Oh, that's really cool. I'm excited. I didn't know that was a thing. I'm going to try that as soon as we're all done. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Um, besides that, there's honestly not too much else that's worth uh noting <laughs> in this yeah the Besides... hardcore group iron helm now properly matches the player's skin tone on male character models that probably would have looked weird before yeah also <laughs> there's now a bank pin in kovac's uh, little infrastructure for his reward shop oh, that's so, cool and also um i guess finally there they removed the archway for a bustle demons in the catacombs of Corinne. oh the one that's annoying the one that everyone hates because <laughs> you can't see anything yeah so that's pretty cool um not too many cool things but there is actually like the update was interesting but honestly the coolest thing is probably the art for this uh update yeah because there was a weapon competition <gasps> for giants foundry oh yeah we mentioned that a few weeks ago yes and we actually got the top five entrants, and uh, they're going to be choosing a winner between them. Ooh. So these are the winners of the big competition. And the first place, 
and I think is a really cool art style. Whoever thought of this is really cool um, because it is the giant's kite axe. And so essentially it's a giant like tree branch with the oh. fallen soldier's kite shield roped <gasps> onto the end of it. Oh my God, I didn't realize it was the kite shield. Yeah, and they use, oh. they use the kite shield as like the axe. That's head, crazy. Part of the axe. I like that. Yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, the second place is the Iron Great Club. Looks like a pretty typical club. Except for it's metal and has spikes. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, the Igneous Club, which is pretty cool. It seems like it's going to be just for the magma giants, fire giants, because it uses their core to heat it up. Oh, that's cool. It's just like red, um, like kind of looks like a hot stone on the end of the club. Yeah, exactly. Um, the anvil flail. Oh, this is funny. Yeah, it's really cool. It looks just like a flail, but on the end is a giant anvil. A literal anvil. Yeah, and then, um, so that is pretty cool. Honestly, I think all of them were really neat, and uh, they'll be contacting the winners this week, so keep an eye out on your player inbox. And also, a uh, huge gargantuan even, <laughs> or if you're Michelle, garangutan. Garangutan, <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks to everyone who submitted a design. We hope to feature some of the runners up on the live stream. Oh in the my future. god. Are they even going to add this to the game or is it just a fun competition? I think it's just a fun competition. Oh, they should add it. Yeah, so it's just a weapon, <laughs> Giants Foundry uh, weapon design competition. I mean, hopefully they add it, but That'd I be mean, nice. yeah, I don't think, I don't see that happening. Lame. Yeah, so honestly, like we said, kind of not too big of an update. Kind of the same update that we got last week with a little bit more information. You'd say it's the opposite of a orangutan update. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But um, I don't know. It's it's kind of really disappointing because not only did the rewards not pass, but also the arena rewards are just just the entire thing is kind of underwhelming, and also the fact that they aren't able to give everyone like any edge edge case um, PVP is kind of just like like we were saying last week. It's kind of like LMS again, but with worse rewards. Mm -hmm. A worse LMS. Yeah, I mean at least it's ranked, but so is LMS. Yeah. So. I mean. And you could just go against one person, which is cool. Yeah. If you want to practice one person. I guess but... the main cool factor of it is that you don't need to, like, make a new account. Like, level a new account if you want to PvP. I think the main cool thing is that you could just go against one person. Because LMS, I mean, if you're in the competitive world, you're against, like, an entire group. Well, yeah, but, I mean, it's not multi. Yeah, but, I mean... Um, so, it, it always is. I just one. liked... I mean, maybe it's just because I haven't looked up LMS. I just went in blindly. I kind of like just doing it with Panda and just being like, all right, there's just the two of us. Let's yeah. just decide what we want. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely cool. I mean, especially... The prizes if, suck, though. Especially if you have someone else specifically you want to go against. Yeah. But, um, but if you don't have people you want to go against. And setting up custom tournaments, like, there's definitely good parts about it, but I don't know. It, it's definitely underwhelming as far as... Especially because, you know, the PvP community, while it's not my favorite community, they definitely have, like, not been getting the best updates. And yeah. this is probably included in there but i don't know what they want yeah well they don't know what they want. i'm like i don't know if they know what they want they yeah. just want something i mean pvp stuff fails all the time so i don't mean yeah know. but um either way kind of interesting let us know what you think about the update whether you thought it was cool uh how do you think the arena is going to fare in the future let us know mm -hmm. so that's going to be about it for the update this week we can move on to the q a section yeah. and this is going to be from mod the Q &A. mod Q &A. <laughs> uh this included the likes of mod sarni goblin and Kirby. So cool. just a quick little session. And the first question I thought was pretty worth mentioning because a lot of people are anticipating this, speaking of PvP, but it's the Wildy Boss rework. Is there any news on that? Because of course there wasn't any mention of it in the Gazette. Um, so Mod Aiza apparently, Mod Sarni said that Mod Aiza had one message for everyone saying that um, since the arena is now fully launched, they still intend on completing the rework this year. Yeah, they're just waiting for the arena to fully launch. Yeah, so they're just waiting for that. Um, they'll make sure that everyone knows more as they start to stage the blogging and the polling. That will be coming up later this year for it as well. Cool. Yeah, so pretty cool. Um, as far as that goes, there's some other stuff talking about like prayer and... Um, how the uh, prayer reordering was uh, a thing that actually got pulled not too actually kind of a long time ago, but it failed by two percent. This is just the ability. I don't even remember hearing about this. Yeah, this was a long time ago, but it's just the ability to reorder and move around your prayers because obviously it's not like spells where you can filter them. It's just 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's just prayers because obviously you're probably not using the first 15 prayers. So it kind of is like a weird thing that you have to like go through and switch them Why all the time. Why did they even vote on that? They could easily just add a filter and it wouldn't affect anyone. Yeah, exactly. But it did fail by 2%. Um, and with differing loadouts and PvP arenas for mains and peers, it's annoying for someone who solely PKs as a main to use 15% praise. <laughs> Because, um, yeah, and he literally used like five things in the arena. You don't get like um, rigor or anything like that, do you? I don't remember, to be honest. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Um, either way, it can be annoying, especially switching around if you're not used to using 15% prayers and you're used to using rigor or piety. And I think Goblin said that um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. It says, uh, purely personally, as a player, I really don't mind. I think for people that make specializing in mains and want to perhaps climb in the PvP arena and suddenly have to play a peer, giving them the option to customize their clicks and how they want to feel um, doesn't feel that deep to me. People might say skill gap or click better, but if you're just moving into a position that's more comfortable for you, does it really matter that much? It does not just do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think most people would mind. Um, I mean, obviously, maybe the, the PvP community might, but um, yeah, overall, it seems like Mod Goblin was down for this type of change, but... Obviously, that'll take some time to see if that actually happens. Yeah, we'll see. Um, also, I, I doubt that's at the top of their list for things that'll be <laughs> You never know. They randomly add, like, quality of life things all the time. Yeah. Um, and question 15, probably one of the biggest questions of the last two weeks is the PvP arena needs better rewards. Yes. Untradeable and tradable rewards. How are you going to tackle this? So, Mod Sarni says that they got a quote from Mod Aizy yet again. <laughs> they say, if there is suitable demand after the, the arena has been released and we're able to come up with new designs that the community as a whole will be happy with i'd love to be able to offer additional rewards from the arena we do want to avoid gp generation rewards though as they tend to incentivize more nefarious activities than we'd like to see within the arena yeah they need stuff i mean it can't really complain about jagex because it's everyone just voted no yeah i mean i get why well, they I mean, voted no on some stuff but like the outfits the void version basically the outfits i don't get why people voted on that yeah i don't know I, i'm not entirely sure either but it's weird um, i wasn't even allowed to vote on that i'm pretty sure yeah it's kind of also it's kind of funny that all these big questions are being answered by i use he's not even there i know right <laughs> um either way um goblin does say that they'd like to see some kind of profit incentive but also completely understand why that's the stance that we've taken because obviously it's lms is easily abused for this very reason mm-hmm um, they're hoping that uh, come a time they're going to be on top of everything enough that they'll be able to reward players engaging in good faith makes sense. But I think part of the issue, especially when it comes to one on one player interactions, is that you, if you've got people just gold farming it, then it ruins it for players who are looking to actually engage. Of course, yeah, this would be way easier to um, abuse than LMS because LMS there's so many players mm -hmm. and it's obviously way better if you win but in this it's just you could just continually farm other people if you found a way to do it yeah exactly um yeah so obviously and he even goes on to say this is a big issue with bounty hunter 2 for me if you wanted to fight and you got matched up against a gold farmer they just type skip and then you have to wait for five minutes then you uh, match up versus another gold farmer that's how i uh i was something of a gold farmer back then yeah. <laughs> that's how i made my first mill someone was like i'll kill you and give you a mill, and I was like, "Cool, just so they could go and get all the rewards." Yeah, exactly, because it, it was more profitable to do that. Um, but yeah, so it's just kind of a weird situation, and it's probably kind of tough to monetize it yeah. in game without it being abusable. True. So, um, the very last question, which I'll give to you because I think you'll be able to answer it very well. Okay. Hopefully, is related to raids. Can we get a nerf to Chambers of Zarek in Theater of Blood after Tombs of a Mask gets released? OSR has recently got influx in new players. Jagex can't expect a new generation of players to perform like the older players. People like doing easier content than doing difficult content. For example, WoW Classic Raid versus WoW Retail Raid. The skilled player can do Tomb of Mascara next. Chambers of Zarek and Theater Blood can cater to people with lower skill sets. Okay. What, do you, what do you think about that? Uh, before we even look at what they said, what do you think about that question? I don't think people would like that. Uh, especially the Theater of Blood. I think that... My impression of the new raid is that this is going to be the most accessible to any players is going to be this new raid. Yeah. And a lot of people I've been talking to about, they don't, they think that Theater of Blood is like, they're never going to make a raid as hard as that again. So I feel like Theater of Blood is the one that's the hardest. I mean, it wouldn't be bad to mix them up. It would yeah. just be like 
really weird. It would take a second to get used to, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't go to theater, so I mean, I don't know. That's kind of hilarious because I don't think theater is very hard at all. But to do it, I think that people mean to do it efficiently. Okay. To not like die in every room is hard. Like the average player, we were talking about this last night actually on the stream. The average player can't do like any raids, obviously. Yeah. And it's just it's just because we play a lot. I think that doesn't seem impossible to us. Well, the thing is, I think the gear requirement is what holds a lot of people back. Mm -hmm. Like if everyone had max, I don't think the mechanics themselves are difficult. It's just the gear. Yeah, because I mean, if everyone had like like I said, if everyone had full um, what's the gear from next? The new best in slot gear Torva. If they had oh, yeah. full Torva with scythes, it would be so much easier. Like uh, I'm not saying it would be easy, but I'm just saying like. The content itself, I don't think, is like super difficult. I mean, obviously, I haven't done it, but again, that's mostly to come down to like gear limitation. I don't have 500 mil to even like get the gear that I would want to get. Exactly. Let alone the, you know, two bill for like max max. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. So I, again, I don't think, especially compared to this person compares it to WoW, the WoW retail raids are so significantly more difficult than these raids that it's laughable. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. This person doesn't make a very good point. Uh, so Mod Goblin said, I think what was a little bit wild about this one is the skilled player could do Tombs of Mask Gare next and Chambers of Zerk and Theater Blood can cater people with low skill sets. I'm like, <laughs> as, just reading it again, like, who is low skill that can do Theater of Blood? Yeah. I chambers, think... at least, you can get the kill count Chambers no matter how low level you are if you spend enough time there. You could just keep dying over and over. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that the core of this question was a good question, but this person... It doesn't seem like they raid. Yeah. So they said, Tob is infinitely harder than Nex. Maybe there's an unlimited number of universes, the unlimited number of possibilities, and every single one of them, Tob is harder than Nex by an absolute landslide. Yeah. it's There's you know, no no universe in where Nex is easier than you know this, or harder than TOB. This question reminds me of Kitty from our chat, who every time I talk about anything, hard content, being like, oh, this feels kind of hard. They're like, this feels not hard. I'm like, Inferno seems hard. Inferno's not hard. And I'm like, top seems hard. No, top's actually not that hard. And I'm like, no. it's not for you. Inferno, not for you. It doesn't. I don't think it matters who you are. Inferno's kind of hard. <laughs> they th they don't think so. And I'm like, I get that it's different for everyone, but you know, for the average player, this is hard content. No, you can't like, deny that. <laughs> I mean, unless you're like one of the very few people, you you probably. I mean, I think everyone gets farmed by Inferno for the first like at least like at least ten mm -hmm. tries. I mean. Unless, like I said, unless you're like one of like the handful or a couple dozen people that like just farm all the content in this game. Yeah. Um, like even like even some of the best players still don't like do Inferno successfully the first, not the first time, but like There's going back 20 to it. times. <laughs> no, even going back to it and having it done successfully before. It's just it's. It's not a matter of like it being difficult. It's a matter of there's so many one shot mechanics that it's just like it's hard. It's it's not hard it's just punishing yes in terms of difficulty i think we've been pretty open about saying that at base level tombs of mask is intended to be even more accessible than chambers of Zarek, which is what i was saying it's not intended to be crazy and accessible the fact that it has a path system means you can essentially brute force individual bosses one by one until you learn them and then you can start chaining them together which i love because that's kind of what i love about chambers yeah is that you're able to brute force it if you need to i think i'll like tomb a lot more because you can choose your route uh, that's cool i'm pretty sure you can that's what they make it sound like yeah yeah i'm pretty sure there's like four bosses and you can like choose in well they're the same four bosses but you can choose in which order you kill them mm -hmm. so i think that'll be a lot more cool i that's why one of the main reasons i dislike chambers is the randomness yeah i still like it i like how it mixes it up but that'll be nice too to get used to yeah so they're going to say Tomb of Mask is likely the most accessible raid. And I think Chambers of Zerkin and Group is pretty accessible anyway. And then the difficulty for Tomb of Mask, it comes from the innovations, etc. I'm hoping you'll be pleasantly surprised with accessibility of Tombs of Mask. It. Also, in regards to expecting a new generation of players to perform like the older players, I think the average RuneScape player now, especially since TOB, the average PVMer is so many leagues better than the average PVMer before TOB's release. Obviously, new players have to learn certain things. However, the resources to learn from are far better now. I think overall, Tomb of Masket will be able to be engaged with by far more people than this question asker realizes. Tomb of Masket scales be easier than Chambers all the way up to ha be harder than TOB. Yeah. Which I like. I like that they're going to have it tier. Yeah. I just can't get over that they're like, Tob should be easy. 
I'm convinced Katie submitted this question. Or, or, or the fact <laughs> that they said that next is more difficult. Maybe they're trying to solo next. Even even still. Yeah, I don't know. TOB is like literally everyone I talk to who's like into in-game content, like chemistry and a bunch of other people in the stream, they're like, I don't think they'll ever make anything as hard as top again. Like uh, yeah. as hard initially. Yeah, it's funny because for this game, that is like really hard content, but like the mechanics themselves aren't super like crazy. Like, I mean, it's like just very punishing. Like blow is just like playing hide and go seek. Yeah, but Versic. I mean, Versic is like, yeah, Versic is definitely one of the harder ones, but um, or probably definitely the hardest one. But but TV you can't really do alone. Most people can't do alone. Yeah, unless yeah. you're like a cold one or something like that. But, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Even Mod Sarni says, especially with TOB specifically, I know the rewards are less, but there is an entry mode if you want to try an easier version. It's an amazing entry way into learning how to PVM. Mm -hmm. I agree. I totally agree. I think that was a the really entry good... Entry mode is pretty cool. That was a really good experience. And I need to practice more. It's funny because uh, Goblin roasts Sarni and he says, you could always have your colleagues carry you through for a quest cape. Isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. This person yeah, clearly just doesn't really know what they're talking about i mean or they just have their own like i don't know they have their own like um version of how this game is that they don't realize for most people it's the complete opposite <laughs> yeah i don't know because like yeah tob is definitely definitely the hardest content in this game not to say yeah. it's like super hard but it's definitely no it, it is hard because you can die so it's like the hardest to complete it and do it correctly yeah i don't know yeah i i'm just looking at it from like a mechanics aspect i guess like the, none of the mechanics i'm looking at and i'm like oh those are those are crazy but also you only have done it entry mode so that could be affecting your opinion as well uh no yeah for sure yeah but um yeah i don't know it just doesn't seem like it's like that crazy to begin with so this person probably just hasn't been playing that much like i said it's not it, i don't not do tob for the fact that i think it's just hard content it's just again i just don't want to have to deal with i could do it with cheap gear but I also don't want to be like gimped so much that it just takes forever. Like it's yeah. just super inefficient to run it with like trash gear. True. But um, yeah, either way, I think that is about it for the Q&A for the mods part. <laughs> but we do have a few questions of our own. We do. So first question is from Hariger on Twitter. What is your estimation of the chance of OSRS releasing different language servers like German, French, etc.? I remember RuneScape 2 German servers and I miss that so much. Yeah. I feel like it makes sense for them to add it, but I don't think if they do add it, I don't think it'll be for years. Yeah, I don't see them adding it. I don't think I've ever seen them talk about it. No, this is. Yeah, I don't really see them adding it. If they did, then there's probably a couple languages they could add it for that I could see, but I just don't see it happening. It doesn't seem like they really have that much manpower to do this. It's weird that they don't have it, though. Now that now that I've read this question, I'm thinking about how weird that is. Yeah, well, I mean, also, um... <laughs> every other game I've ever played, you can choose a language. Well, what it's called is whenever you move a game to a different region, it's called localization. Mm -hmm. and it's actually one of the most like tedious and expensive processes that a game does. Because you have to remember, Jagex got money. Uh, not in development, they don't. <laughs> but like, yeah, because if you think about it, let's say there's like 10,000 lines of text, which is, I think, low for this game. Mm -hmm. Then they have to go through and have 10,000 lines of text translated by a team of people and then checked again. So it takes... A really long time and costs a lot of money. So I think I doubt it'd be worthwhile, will... though. I mean, regardless of what I think, I just doubt it'll happen. Yeah. Uh, second part of the question: What foreign servers would they make based on the player-based demographic? I would say Spanish because I feel like I've run into a lot of people in RuneScape who exclusively speak Spanish, and I've like go on Google Translate and we talk to each other through Translate. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I could see them coming with with a like a like a Central America server that mm -hmm. had like just languages for that and then like a German server because I think that's the majority of or that's also Central Europe and you know I think that majority of players do in Europe are from Germany yeah like you don't get a ton of you know like um I don't know, like like Turkish Italian. people or something like that <laughs> yeah I think mainly it is like German yeah I can see that next question from Matt what feature update are you most looking forward to? And he said, I personally am looking forward to the special servers like Merchant, Fresh Start, etc. We talked about these last week. I know they are confirmed, but I hope they come. I'm looking forward to the raid. Oh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to the raid. That's like the number one thing in my mind. And also um, the quest that they might upload from RuneScape 3. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to those. No, oh, that'll be really cool. Yeah. But I think raid number one. 
because I think it'll be really cool. Especially because it's supposed to be like more accessible. I could try it on easy and like get over and like get harder and harder. I think that'll be really fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What about you? Um, mine are gonna be kind of weird, but um, the first one, even though I don't even know if I would ever really participate in it, I think it'd be really cool to see and experience the extended wilderness. <gasps> Yeah, that one sounds pretty cool, too. Yeah, so if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, there was, like, an, a leaked, or not a leaked, but, like, a... It was the Gamer Jam. It was, yeah, game during jam. the Game Jam, there was, like, a single photo released of, like, the potential, like, end wilderness, which is, like, an Has entire like new area. Bosses, new that's PvP like, areas. It's, like, almost as big as the entire wilderness. It looks but so cool. It's a no-level cap zone, so level threes can kill level 100s and vice versa and um there's a rat boss yeah there's rat bosses <laughs> there's the first ever world bosses i would love that there's like uh, quests there's like crazy stuff there it'd be so fun and uh probably the second would be um whenever they decide to add another skill to the game yeah that that patch would love which will never happen well speaking of wraith asked what would it take for a new skill to be at to osiris them to stop holding it and just do it uh yeah they would they would have to not pull it which just do it, you guys. Just I mean, I do think, it. I think the last one, which was warding, got really close, but it, seemingly it's like not, it's a meme, but it's also not a meme at the same time where like Jagex will just never add another ability. Like you see that in the, in the Reddit all the time, the subreddit, that they're just never going to add another like skill in the game. I think that they will, but I think it's going to take a while because and, they're being babies about it. Yeah. I was like, I, I think that is like, kind of true like i think the the community could probably get pretty close to 70 percent, but 75 just seems like so far away unless i don't know unless yeah again they just like do it yeah i think they just have to not pull it which i encourage them to do it you know what just go for it <laughs> yeah it's kind of hard to say because obviously like osrs was built on polling but or change the poll results so it doesn't have to be three quarters of people <laughs> vote yes yeah i don't know I mean, it would be cool, but also, I guess a lot of people fear going down, like, the summoner route and stuff like that. I think it's just a lot of people who are maxed and don't want to have to grind another skill. Oh, there's a weird amount of that as well. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. It's it's kind of... Also, a lot of people are saying that, like, 2367 or whatever the new number would be is, like... Or, yeah, is it 20... I think it's 2376. People just thought it wasn't as pretty as a number. Yeah, they're saying it's not as cool as 2277. I, I a did that number. before and I was like, well, if we get enough new skills added, it'd be like something with 69 at the end. And then it'd be like, huh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think eventually we'll get another skill, but it won't be for a very long time, I don't think. It's hard to imagine people so consistently being like, we don't want a new challenge in this game. Yeah. Like, why? And, and also, it seems. <laughs> The thing I also don't think it'll happen for a very long time because it seems like the devs have more or less given up on that. Trying, idea. but they also like, gave up on Pride, so hopefully they come back and try this again. Well, the thing is, in every single roadmap they've given us for the last two or three years, never once have they mentioned a new skill, like ne never even like talked about it. Mm -hmm. So I I just don't see it happening. Lame. Anyway, next question is from Tactical Butter on Discord. I don't even think that they specifically asked for the podcast, but that was an interesting question. So it's a few questions in one. Uh, how do you feel about progressing the POH? I'm considering grinding till I get the pool for refreshing my stats after a few bears run and considering getting the portal too. Well, that's something I do a lot of. Is there anything else you'd recommend for a purely technical gain? Anything worth the fashion flex so much I can't live without it? And they just said, side note, that they weren't asking us to answer everything, but we're going to answer everything. Yeah. I mean, they the, just want to know what you need in PH for like a mid-level player. They're, pro they're all pretty easy questions. I think the most important things to have in your POH, but that will take a while, are the spirit tree, the jewelry box, and the pool. I use those three every single day. Oh, I, okay. I can see that. Mm-hmm. I All use right. my spirit tree constantly. I wouldn't agree, but I can see that. What do you use every day that you'd recommend? Um, I would also say the pool. You don't even need the highest level pool because I think that just does mm -hmm. run. I think that's yeah, which you can just difference. take stamina. Um, yeah, whatever pool you can get, get, and you could just take pots for the rest. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely, it would be really nice to get the one that gives you special attack for most bosses. But if you're not using 
if you are going to barrels you don't need your special attacks. So. yeah it's not like you're going to corp um yeah but um i guess so definitely the pool and then jewelry box because i think of anything i've used in my poh i've used the jewelry box the most i use it all the time <laughs> yeah i use it more than the pool oh yeah and then uh, the third would be a um the i don't remember the name of Fury it ring? the portal no, nexus the gilded portal nexus yeah i use that a lot too because yeah like you said if you're going to barrows a lot that's what i did early on is i bought a portal nexus and then threw barrels on there yeah i just don't barrels online i didn't even think about that yeah because it's just it's so the 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 replay loop for that is like crazy easy because you don't ever have to bank barrows unless you get like four pieces of loot or something mm -hmm. like that so you only have to really bank once every like four or five maybe ten runs depending on how lucky you get with like how much damage you take but um so it's just kill the boss go back uh use your pool and then go back to barrows like it, it takes like one minute yeah but um so yeah i don't know probably definitely those three mm -hmm. so for, we both agreed me. on the pool and the jewelry box for sure yeah i didn't get my tree until much later i, I think the trees the tree the trees more for me because i still do farming contracts all the time i go to the farming guild like several times every day yeah but so you can I, also take the jewelry box to get there i guess yeah yeah but the tree takes me usually right next to where i need to be in the back of the farming guild oh okay <laughs> But yeah, is there anything that you'd add just for aesthetics? I like the um the jars, how those look on display, the boss jars. Um, for aesthetic jars, I mean they're really cheap. Mm -hmm. If you want to get them, depends on the jar. <laughs> they're like ten to forty k, which they're none of them. Unless you want the Skatiza one, eight mil. Okay, yeah, that's literally <laughs> the only one. But, yeah, um, all the other ones are really cheap. Um, one thing that I would say for a med account that would be worthwhile getting is looking up. And seeing if it's worth getting any hangable jewelry. Um, oh, like Xerix Talisman stuff? Yeah, because I, I, I have the Dig Site Pendant and the Xerix Talisman hung. I use those a lot, too. And they help a lot, depending on where you're going. Like, if you're farming Brutal Blacks, you're going to definitely want a Teleport to Xerix Inferno. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And if you're doing uh, in Catacombs on that Skatizo grind, you're going to want Xerix Heart. <laughs> yeah, so... Those are definitely worthwhile, and they're very cheap, but they do have fairly high requirements, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. But you can be a mid-level account and just level up your construction easy if you have the money. No, yeah, that, that's what I did, and it's definitely served me. Yeah, you recommend it. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's like probably the best 50 mil I've spent in the game, even to this day. Jesus, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, our final question. Uh, I did not take a screenshot, so I'm only pretty sure it was King Canadia who asked, it, do we have any plans? To be making more videos soon. No. I do actually. But I, I, I don't. Yeah. Well, we have Alfresco Shaw Alfresco like told us the other day too. Like if we have any ideas, like they're happy to edit it for us. Because editing, I feel like is the most daunting part. Because Robert's usually the one who edits. Well, and it he is works. for Michelle because she doesn't know how to edit. Yeah. It's well, I'm kind of learning. I really like editing, but it does take kind of a long time. Mm -hmm. Especially like depending on how well you want to edit. Yeah. I have like a video that I started that could be like a YouTube short, like a TikTok style, like very small, short video, but I haven't added audio to it because I just don't know what to say yet. Yeah. But I, I literally had in my planner written for a day, like come up with one video idea. Even if I don't film it, I just want to have ideas. Like I just need to think. Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to do more stuff. No, even I, though I, I so like much making stuff. videos, but like, I don't know, whenever you're so busy, it's like hard to find like ideas that you're like very motivated to do yeah well that's why i was trying to think of ideas that aren't long grinds like literally ideas of something that you could do in a day yeah yeah but uh, it's also funny because this kind of goes back to um that person saying that like the newer players are like less equipped to do harder content when it's like completely the opposite like back then that people were doing like theater and inferno with like the trashiest guides mm -hmm. and now there's like 101 inferno guides or 101 like easy simple like theater guides for every single boss true we have so a lot of like, options i don't know how you'd be less equipped with information <laughs> nowadays i think it's just all these videos make it clear that's really hard <laughs> i guess but also this is something i talk about with my friends i feel like as years go on obviously more people are playing games and that like the average gamer intelligence has increased by so much mm -hmm. that it's like it's kind of less wild. noobs yeah or like even if they are noobs it's like they've experienced games before yeah whereas like whenever i first started playing like you could be a good player and just like that would be your first game exactly but um, <laughs> you've come yeah. a long way 
It's kind of funny. Yeah, that was it. That's our last question for today. But if you guys want to ask us your own questions, you can at Twitter at Boonbape OSRS. You can on YouTube, Instagram, or both Boonbape. Our stream is twitch.tv slash Boonbape, where I stream five days a week. Stop by on Friday, please, because I'm probably going to be bored. No one's talking to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talking to yourself for hours alone is a dark. That's what happened at Dark Mole. That's dark mole. dark mole. That's what happened at Giant Mole. That's why I left so uh, ended the stream a little bit earlier because I was just getting tired because for like 20 minutes, no one said anything. And I it's my own fault for going to Giant Mole. But at that point, I was just sleepy and I was like, all right, I don't even want to switch content. I'm just going to end it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I still stream for seven and a half hours, but it felt early. The giant dark mole. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, thanks again, everyone, for listening. Hope you all enjoyed it. And make sure if you do want to join the community, you can join our Discord, ask us questions there, or just, you know, group up for any content, whether it's Mm -hmm. an OSRS or something else. Yeah, you could find that in our YouTube description or on our Twitch page. Yep. So that's going to be about it. Thanks for listening. And what do I normally say? We'll see you all. (laughs) Wait, what do I? We'll see you all very soon. Oh, yeah. Let me do it. No, go ahead. And we'll see you all. Very soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Keep scurp. <laughs>